Hello everyone, welcome to Airpedia Education. So, I hope your preparation for this CGP DTM Group A Gazetted Officer position is going really well. So, you know prelims exam is around the corner, but after that you need to write the men's exam also. So, as I have been telling you since beginning, so you ha all have a very less frame of time to prepare all the core technical subject. So, I told you since from the beginning, when you are in such kind of situation, then you need to practice limited number of question and those question must be selected in such a way they cover almost all the topics of that particular subject. So, today I am going to discuss with you people here some 4 to 5 sample questions of electronics devices and circuit whose solution you can get on the website of your PDA education. So, if you are preparing electronics devices or physical electronics, then what direction you need to follow and what kind of question you need to prepare. See, very first thing is that make a sheet of all the important formulas because we have seen in the past they are mostly asking the numericals question. So, in EDC, our journey started with a semiconductor. First, we start with the basic of semiconductor, then we join the two piece of the semiconductor or two different kind of the material, then it become a junction. So, from there, the property of PN junction evolved and there are different kind of the diode you study, tunnel diode, short key, Gina diode, photodiode, LED, you know, photovoltaic cell, so many stuffs are there, right? So, each are having their own voltage current characteristics. Then you make another junction, two junction, three terminal, then you went for the BJT, similarly then for the MOSFET, etc. So, today in this video, I am going to discuss with you only four to five questions which you need to prepare related to junction physics of the electronics devices and circuit. See, you might have studied, there are various formulas how to calculate the Fermi energy level for N type semiconductor, P type semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor. And you know EI is the notation used for the Fermi energy in the intrinsic semiconductor. EF is for the P type or N type. You can see the very first question, a silicon sample is doped with 10 raised to power 17 arsenic atom per centimeter cube. Means the doping concentration is given, what is the equilibrium whole concentration at 300 degree Kelvin. So, for this you can directly use the law of mass section. Then he is saying where is EF relative to EI. Then you know you are adding the arsenic atom, arsenic impurity you are adding into pure sil silicon sample. So, you know what kind of the resultant semiconductor will be obviously it will be extrinsic or it will be a doped semiconductor. And you know there will be shift in the Fermi level position when you increase the temperature or when you vary the doping. So, what will be the new position that you can calculate and I believe if you have prepared the device physics very thoroughly, then you might have also calculated the formula which gives you the shift in the Fermi level of doped semiconductor as compared to intrinsic semiconductor. You can directly substitute the value given there until or unless constant or not given, then I told you people you use the typical value like Ni, Ni intrinsic semiconductor value for silicon there is a typical value, for germanium there is a typical value at the 300 degree Kelvin, right? If they mention then use those value, not only calculate the value also show the graphically, you can take the y axis energy and x axis, on the energy y axis you can scale EC, EV, EF, EI and show the differences what all you are getting from the numerical calculation, right? So like this guys if you solve then it means you are including all the relation. Next question you can see here, referring to this figure, so they had given one figure where a specimen with some dimension carrying current placed in the magnetic field and it's a Hall setup, it's a Hall effect setup, Hall effect is a very important concept. So they had mentioned consider a semiconductor bar with dimension for magnetic field 10 kilo gauss, kg, kg is not a kilogram, kilo gauss, gauss and tesla you might have studied in the EMFT or in the basic physics these are the unit of the B, magnetic flux density, 
in the direction shown below right and it's it also have given the transformation the current carried by the specimen is 1 milli ampere and it's given there that there is a voltage induced between a and b phase that is minus 2 millivolt and vcd voltage between this phase and this phase is 100 millivolt then find the type concentration and mobility of the majority carrier obviously they will not ask that much question in one question but for the practice i have taken this question see guys these questions are taken in such a way they basically prepare or revise your entire concept and they are taken from the standard author book only right and next if i go ahead see in a very long p type silicon bar with a cross sectional area something like this and doping n a 10 raised for 17 v inject hole such that the steady state excess hole concentration is 5 into 10 raised for 16 see there are two phenomena one is the injection one is the extraction if you are at the thermal equilibrium there will be thermal equilibrium concentration which are denoted by n naught and p naught if you are doing injection means you are putting there some carrier if you are doing extraction you are taking out carrier from there usually when the diode is forward by there is injection around the junction when diode is reverse by there is extraction around the junction that concept is basically entirely covered by this question so the question is what is the steady state separation between fp and ec at x is equal to 1000 angstrom so he is saying when you are doing the injection then obviously is there any change in the fermi level position or not if yes then you need to find the fp and ec see fp is the fermi level or quasi fermi level of the p type semiconductor and at what distance they are asking at 1000 angstrom so till now you have discussed only fermi level independently without function of x but now they are asking question as a function of x at x is equal to 1000 angstrom what is the hole current there and how much is the excess stored hole charge assume these are the parameter trust me guys this question cover all the device physics if somebody says this is a semiconductor we are doing some injection what all dynamics inside that semiconductor are changes with that injection this question cover that all aspect so that's why i have taken these kind of question right now next question if i share with you an abrupt silicon pn junction sometimes students get confused with abrupt step graded step indexed so these are the some terminology used with the junction i will be discussing them in the theoretical section an abrupt pn junction has na is equal to 10 raised for 18 on one side and nd is equal to this on the other side junction means it's having the two semiconductor p side and n side right this is the specification calculate the fermi level position at 300 degree kelvin in the p and n region very straightforward question okay next question draw an equilibrium band diagram for the junction and determine the contact potential v naught from the diagram see there is a formula for the contact potential v naught is equal to kt by q natural log of n a n d by n i cos square so that is a mathematical or computational formula but he is asking you draw the energy band diagram and from the energy band diagram calculate the contact potential see obviously you know whenever you have two different kind of the materials so when you join them the diffusion current occur there is it clear because there is a concentration difference and that current keeps on flowing until or unless their fermi level come on the equal position so if there is a difference in the fermi level that will give you some contact potential potential that contact potential you can calculate you can convert energy into voltage you know energy is equal to volt into charge from the transformation you can calculate that contact potential that all will be discussed in the theoretical aspect okay he is not asking you to calculate by using the formula he is conventionally asking from the energy band diagram obviously you will be getting the answer same from the both if you directly use the formula same answer you will be getting but he specifically mentioned draw an equivalent band diagram for the junction and determine the contact potential from the diagram it means you need to take on the y axis and energy and on the x-axis the x scale and then you need to mention ec ev where is your efp where is your efn then from that energy scales how you are giving the v naught contact potential that is very very important next up we have an abrupt silicon pn junction has na is equal to 10 raised to power 18 
and d is equal to 5 into 10 raised to the power 15 per centimeter cube. The junction described in has a circular cross section with a diameter of 10 micrometer. Calculate x and naught. Calculate x p naught. Calculate q plus. Calculate epsilon naught for this junction at equilibrium. Calculate electric field as a function of x. Calculate the charge density to scale x. You know, whenever there is a junction formation, then definitely there will be, you know, depletion layer. In depletion layer, some positive charge accumulates, space charge on one side, negative charge accumulate on the one side. So, if we see that from the three dimension point of view, there will be a charge density. And whenever junction is formed, there is a built in electric field. So, it is asking you to calculate those charge density and plot how those charge density around the junction are varying with the scale x. How that built in electric field is varying with the scale x. So these all questions are related to the diode physics and device physics. So guys, I believe if you practice these four to five question after doing the diode study or diode physics, you will be in position to solve any of the question because these question while solving will ask you each and every formula, especially this second question. This is a very, this third question. This is a very good question. Is it clear? These are not like a way, okay, you are solving one question, use only one formula. No. While solving these questions, you need to put, you know, some stress on your mind and you need to recall the multiple electrostatics formula of the device physics. Why I call it the device physics? Because ultimately, when you are joining the two different kind of the material, you are modeling the behavior of the charge particle and you are getting some built-in potential, you are getting some built-in field. So, while doing your, you know, syllabus coverage for the men's exam, I suggest you people to choose question in such a way, less number of question, but they cover all the topics of your entire subject. So, do practice this question. If you need any assistance, feel free to connect us and you will get solution on the uh, website of your Pedia Education. Thanks a lot.